those signals from the sound team you got to just act like you know what you're doing for a little bit longer amen welcome thank you for coming this morning to word of faith worship center amen this is a this is a happening place good place to be and i uh, just wanted to share we got some of our some of our little uh seed came in we've been waiting on some of these been on back order these little book booklets we have over here in the fellowship hall uh, one of them and they're all written by brother kenneth e hagan he graduated to heaven in 2004, I believe, 2003, 2004. Preached the gospel for over 50, 60 years and uh, was paralyzed at age 16. But read in the Bible that Mark 11, 23 and 24 says, if you'll believe, all things are possible. And rose up out of that bed healed. And uh, he wrote these little booklets. Or he preached them and somebody wrote them for him. But we got the one back that says, how to write your own ticket with God. Amen. Don't go get a ticket, write your ticket. Amen. Don't get a ticket from the policeman. Write your ticket from God. But also, I like this one. I like all of them. It says, you can have what you say. See, but a lot of times we're saying what we have 
well, I've got this, and, you know, the doctor said I've got this, and the bank man says I don't have this, but God says you can have what you say. So if you don't like what you got, say what you want. And Jesus has everything that we need. It's been laid up for us in heavenly places, in Christ. Amen? So if you want it, you got to speak it. you got to believe it and speak it out of your mouth. That's how you get everything from God by faith. So I just want to let you know those little books are in. Uh, these, these are tracks. If you know somebody that needs a word, stick a few of them in your, in your car and have them and, and give them away. Amen? I, I found out there's some good stuff in the, in the Word of God. And also... Uh, Liberty Council sent us a nice thank you letter. You know, a lot of times we, we send some of our tithes at the end of the year and said on behalf of Matt and Anita Staver at the Liberty Council team, thank you for your continued support. Uh, your generous gift of $1,000 is a wonderful blessing and so vital in the battle to defend and preserve life, religious liberty, and the family. Your faithful partnership is a great source of encouragement to the entire team. May God continue to bless and keep you and yours by grace. So thank you for your support there. And uh, I got some other good news this weekend. And I've been kind of busy working on a little PowerPoint that Kelsey's got on the screen. But anybody know what this is? Mm -hmm. Close. It's purple. Y'all can't see it because y'all back here. It's called a Roku. Roku, Roku, Roku. See, y'all know what it is now, Roku. Y'all cool. Y'all know what Roku is. You plug this into your TV. Now, it costs you about maybe, last time I bought it, it's $49, $50. And you don't have to pay nothing but other than what you pay for your Internet. But you can, you can go in there and you can plug this in, and you can go to speakfaith.tv and watch Word of Faith Worship Center now. That's uh, compliments of Dr. Bill Bailey, who, who updated our screen and a couple pictures for me and then told me. I didn't ask him. He said, I and just want to let you know you're on the Roku channel. And Fire Channel, Fire TV. I don't have a fire stick, but I got the fire. <laughs> Come on, him. So if you know some people that are looking for some good word, don't cost them anything extra. Come on, send them to the Roku channel, speakfaith.tv. I see speakfaith.tv. That'll be our channel, and I'm not the only minister there. I'm just one of, a, of uh, however many Dr. Bill has put on there. That's the prophecy. That's some prophecies coming forth. The Lord said he'll, he'll take my voice. This, came, this prophesied to me three years ago. The Lord would take my voice and make it a bigger influence to the world. See, it's not John, John the Baptist says, I, I'm just a voice that God said, speak this. See, give God your faith and he'll give you a voice. Voice of victory. Amen. So just wanted to pass that on. That's, that's God. He's just blessing us. Continue to bless us. And then uh, Leo Munger, we want him to come up here this morning. And Leo, you can stand down here in the front. I'm going to give you this microphone. The same God we serve, what is our theme this year? Fear not, for the Lord is with thee. The Lord is with Leo and Judy and all of you guys, and the devil don't like us, but tough. We got a blood covenant. When I got in the bloodline, I got on the blood time, timeline, God's timeline. And Jesus said, as long as I'm here, I'm going to stay here and preach this gospel. And can't nobody, Jesus said, I lay my life down. Nobody take it. The same is with his people. Amen. Come up here and give us testimony, Leo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the, the devil's tried to take me out several, several times. And the, the, the first one I remember was uh, I was up in the mountains working and I fell off of a ladder, landed on a cement pad, and, and I busted the back of my head open. And if the guy wasn't there, I'd, I'd have probably went out. But poor God, you know, the guy that he put a, a, a pin in my mouth and I was starting to swallow my tongue because I, I, I was going in convulsions. And uh, it cost me a night in the hospital, but, but I, was, I was redeemed from that one. And then, not too long ago, uh, they'd done a triple bypass on me. I, 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 I had a triple bypass, and I did not know what was going on with me. And I never had any issues with any heart problems. But I kind of took, got a, got a light stroke. And, and when they were doing all the tests, they come to find out that 
the stroke wasn't anything. It was my heart that was uh, getting ready to fail on me. And I just thank God for what he's looking through. And just, you're getting ready to see a video of what this past Wednesday. And I was, I'm, I'm a flagger person. I, and I, I, I really truly believe that God has put me in this position to uh, teach the workers that there is a God and he's looking out for me because I'm his child. I'm a child of the king and I, I just thank him for looking out for me. As a, a as, as you'll see, I was, I was flagging traffic and, and uh, a car come through my work zone and I was just trying to get the uh, cars to move over when he, uh, see, <laughs> but I did get the cars to, to pay attention to what I was doing and they got out of the way. So, and, and I mean, God's, God's is my deliverer. He's my healer. And I just, and he's there for me. I have to turn loose of him because he won't turn loose of me. And I just thank God that's got me like that. So. You see, they caught, they caught that person. So see, and I, and I believe we spoke this year or have spoken that, you know, God's putting you, he's going to put you in strategic places. Not to die, but to live and help others around you live. You know, you remember Paul on the boat? He was going to Rome, and because Paul was on the boat, those idiots, <laughs> when we say idiots, they, they were told, Paul told them, don't, don't sail, it's not good. But they didn't listen to the man of God, amen, and they went on. But thank God he was there because they got saved. Well, thank God Jesus came, and because he came, we got saved. We got a covenant. And I just want to share with you Psalms 25 as our opening scripture this morning. I want you to listen to this. There's some specific words in here, and I might speak to specific people as the Lord has put in my heart. Psalms 25. To you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. King David here. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Leo just testified of that. We got a video that showed you the devil can't triumph over us. We got a covenant. Yes, let none that wait on you be ashamed. Let them be ashamed, which transgress, transgress it without a cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. That's the shepherd. He leads us what? Show me your way. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to your mercy, mercy, remember you me for your goodness sakes, O Lord. David's pleading his cause not because of who he is, but because of whose God, who's God is. He's, he's merciful. Good and upright, verse 8, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will, be, the meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy, mercy and truth to such as keep. Come on. Why wasn't God able to protect that baby, or the, the, that child, that family? Why wasn't God? All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to such as keep his covenant. You got to know you got a covenant and keep it. To keep it means you, you know it, you speak it, you live it, you believe it. And you, when you keep the covenant, God's able to keep you. It ain't so much, why, did God, why, did, why couldn't God keep you? Have you? Are you keeping his covenant? Amen? Are you rising with it, living with it, sleeping with it? It's his covenant. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that fears the Lord? Fear not. That reverences the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease Tammy, his seed shall inherit the earth. Your seed shall inherit the earth. That's a promise to your children's children. Amen. 
Here is a promise for our children, mothers. I'm saying this. Here's a problem for our, our children, mothers. We're going to sing a song this morning. We're getting ready to. Our God is a way maker. I don't care what it looks like. He has made the way. Let us stand together for our pledges. I want you to know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the creator. God's the creator, and he has made a way for us. Amen? I said he's made a way for you. And that way is a good way. It's a blessed way. And it's the way we got to determine every day to choose to live it, to breathe it, and walk it. Amen? Long life, God said, I'll satisfy you. So let's we'll do our pledges here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To the Christian flag, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior crucified, risen, and coming again, with life and liberty to all who believe and to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. That's your way right there. Praise team, come forward. That's the way right there. It's whatever God says to do, just do it. Amen. Whatever he says, do, just do it. So, Father, we thank you. You are the way maker. You are our king. You are our priest, Lord. You have given us freely all things to enjoy. And, Lord, we enjoy coming in your presence today. We enjoy coming here to praise and lift up your name today, Lord. Lord, your banner over us is love. I said your banner over us is love. Lord, you are a shield and a light. You are the great king. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are touching, you are touching your people today. But not only just today, every day, Lord. And we give you the praise and honors. We worship you today, Lord. We thank you for your mighty spirit in this place, in your people. God with us, God in us, God for us. Let's worship the God that loves us. Thank you, Jesus.
de Jesus.
your heart. Vicki, your heart. God's mended your heart. He's mended your hearts. 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 Ha ha. Worship the Lord. We worship the Lord, the creator, the way maker, the healer. He's mended it. He's met every day. He is the way. We say He's the way. Lord, you're the way. Today, He's the way. Tomorrow, He's the way. Glory to Jesus. Worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Praise you, God. Yes, Lord.
Submitting to his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He holds you in the palm of his hands. And because of submission to the word, things are in control. Because he honors his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
your blessings, for your love. I thank you. We bless you on this morning, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. And we are forever grateful. We will forever give your name the praise. In Jesus' name. for a few minutes here, saints. We're going to honor the Lord in our, in our tithes and offerings, which represents everything that we are. Amen. Without the Lord, I'm just an old clump of clay. But I'm, we're not without the Lord, right? Thank you, Jesus. I remember at Spirit of Faith Worship Center, my wife led a women's ministry. They were called the WOW Team. They were called Women of Worship. If you turn it upside down, that's moms. <laughs> women of Worship. He's healed hearts this morning, physical hearts. And he healed them because he's the healer. Thousands of years, but I'm, we believe a manifestation took place today. Today, corporately today. And anything else you need in the way. Amen. If you turn with me to 1 Corinthians 3, 6, concerning your giving this morning. <laughs> That's some good conversation. I found out that uh, Social Security... I was on Social Security, got a raise. I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I, I, we're, we're praying. Amen. My mama, mama would be jumping. <laughs> She'd be shouting. Because I kept telling her, she said, well, you know, we got 2%. We got something. And I said, man, mom, praise God, you got something and be believing for bigger. You know, she's not living off Social Security now. <laughs> she's living off the breath of heaven. So don't, don't. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why do we want to wait to get to heaven before we start experience heaven? On the earth. Amen. When God says you can do it, you can have what you say. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 6, and I just want to remind you, everybody, next Sunday, Sunday evening, John and Helen, John and sweet Helen will be here. As he calls her sweet Helen, so I've got to prophesy what the prophet says. But they'll be joining us here. Invite somebody, bring them to church Sunday, Sunday evening. They'll be here at 6 o'clock Sunday evening. So just be uh, setting aside what you'd like to give for that particular meeting, for that particular ministry. Uh, they are changing lives one soul at a time. So bring somebody. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 6. Paul says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. God gives increase, not decrease. The devil, he brings duh, duh, decrease. God brings I increase more and more. He's the God of abundance. You got to be thanking him for that. So when I see decrease, I start decreeing increase. If I see any decrease, I got to start decreeing increase because that's the way. That's the way I got to do it. That's the way we got to do it as believers. We believe, therefore, the spirit of faith says, I have believed, therefore, I speak. Amen. That's how I get increase. I speak increase. That's how I get healed. I speak healing. That's how I get blessed. I speak blessings. Amen. That's the way. That's what Jesus did. He showed us the way. Man can't give the increase. Only God can do that. We plant the seed. I go to bed. I know not how. Why? Because I'm not the way maker. I'm the seed planter. Amen. God planted the seed. Jesus. He is the way of increase. You want to get blessed in your finances? <laughs> Come on. I 
think inflation was about 12%. Inflation about 12%. I think that's why they kind of round the number off. The Bible says give 10%. Come on, you want to destroy inflation? Rub it in the devil's nose and give more. Amen? Rub it in his nose. Therefore. Amen? We plant the seed in the garden. Go to sleep and get up and the seed produces... That's God's system after its kind. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. That depends if we, how much grass you keep out of the garden. Because we keep keeping the grass out, keeping the unbelief out, keeping the doubt out. Increase comes more and more. Never is it his will, God's will for us to decrease. In 2023, he will increase me, we more and more. The Lord is with me. Increase is with me. Increase is with me. Amen. Psalms 115, 14 through 15. If he said, let me, let me get that Psalm. Psalm 115, 14 through 15. So I don't want you to think I'm just saying things. I say what my father says. The Lord, my shepherd, shall increase you more and more, you and your children. So as me, I say, God's going to increase me more and more in Kelsey and Dallas and Ruthie and Rowan. That's my seed. More and more. Now they got to do something. They got to believe God and they got to sow. Oh, zero from zero is zero. They got to give God something by faith. By faith. If he said he'll increase us more and more, no matter how much a dozen of eggs cost, no matter how much the inflation is, buck, God says he will increase not those that don't have a covenant. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for those that are believing for increase more and more. Now, I could have felt, I could have, I could have, I could have walked by decrease when I started fixing the eggs for me and Rowan the other morning. He didn't even eat his eggs. I should have went in there. I should have at least gave them to the dog. Him some expensive eggs. I didn't just crack one for me and one for Rowan. I went ahead and cracked on three for each. <laughs> scrambled them had a lot of eggs I wasn't thinking about decrease I wasn't thinking about how much they cost I was thinking about how much God gave me Jesus he paid it all not for me to decrease but to increase amen that goes when you open up your refrigerator see it full see it full amen and then start saying it's full and you'll have it full come on you have you can have what you say. Who wants this little book? Anybody got one? Come up here and get it. Anybody want this book? Come and get it. You can have what you say. So praise team, come back up here. As we get ready, as we give this morning, we're going we're gonna to make a way again. We're going to sing Waymaker again. Look at that, Buck. I tell you what, don't just don't get one. Here, get two. Fill yourself up with that and then give it away. Love ain't nothing till you give it away. I said, love ain't nothing till you give it away. God gave Jesus the way maker. Come up here, praise team. As you purpose in your heart, give this morning. Not grudgingly, not out of a need, not out of, out of necessity, but out of worship to God. And we're going to sing Waymaker as y'all come and, and bring your tithes and offerings this way. And you sing with it too. Because he's our way maker. Every day he's making a way. Every day, he's showing us the way because he is the way. And he's our maker, the maker of heaven and earth. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, as, our, as this church gives, Lord. I thank you for increasing us more and more, more and more in all that we do because we're going to bring honor and glory to you in Jesus' name. Let's worship him. Bring your tithes and offerings to the front. Just worship the Lord. Enjoy His presence in this place. i
Amen. So be it. And hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's all yours, Pastor Reed. Well, praise the Lord. Come on, sharpen me up a little bit. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the way maker. Yes, he is. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Well, thanks to God. The good news I would have been spoken. So, Pastor, come back up here and said a benediction. Oh, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come thanking you, Father God, for this day. Oh, God, for this is the day that you have made. And we choose to rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. Holy Spirit, we just come actually rise up big within, big in and through and out of me. The unsaturated word of God, let it fall on fertile ground. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 This morning, thanks to God, I'll be coming out of Psalms 23. I'll continue with the theme, Psalms yes, 23. Mm-hmm. Father, yeah, fear not, for the Lord is with thee. Yes, and it's really as following. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley or shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And I prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. They are not my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And thanks God, I just want to zero in in the message this morning on verse 4, where it said, Yet though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Let's continue to follow the theme for this year. Fear not, for thou art with me. And just putting a towel to that package or stripping is slamming the door on fear. Slamming the door on fear. Thanks to God. One of the greatest enemies to the process and success of every believer is this deceptive and destructive spirit called fear. Every evil spirit are recognized by what they do, and this human is no different. Right. To walk in the victory purchased by our Lord Jesus Christ, we must slam the door on fear. Yeah. You see, thanks to God, we got to realize that we're not a person that should be living in fear. We should be living in faith, walking in faith. Because, you see, we love this this uh, passion of scripture have been and will continue to be a amazing source of comfort and assurance in so many different circumstances and situations 
in our life. But in this, mo this morning, the, yet though I walk through the valley of shallow death, I will fear no evil. Literally, when David spoke of the valley of the shadow of death, he is speaking about the terror that one often experiences when they are standing in the blink of death itself. No doubt, David is running from Saul. He often feels very near to death. And as a result, David learned how to proceed through fear and how to slam the door on his fear. Nobody said one time that all, somebody said one time that all fear is, is false evident appearing real. Although the object of fear was just as illusion or imagination or just a mist of fall that is driven away by the sun. I wish that were true, but we all know in many cases it is not true at all, thanks to God. The object of our fear are many times more real than we really want to think about it. Therefore, I bring this question to you today, and I believe it's relative, relative and important. How are we supposed to slam the door on fear and face the future fearlessness when the things in our future that promote general fear remains the same. In other words, how do we raise above the reality and possibility of the manifestation of our fears? Let me say this. You can tell someone, don't fear, don't be afraid, but, do that, but does that eliminate fear from them? When the fearful thing of our environment remains the same, of course, the answer is no, thanks to God. Because we're living in a society, in a world that everything that you talk about, you look at, you see, you speak, you hear, it brings up fear, some type of fear within it, if you let it. That's why, thanks to God, we have to slam the door on fear. To slam the door on fear is not just ignoring the object of or the object of our fear, to slam the door on fear, you must give someone something greater than the thing that causes fear. The greater thing that is greater than fear itself is the word of God. Amen. To slam the door on fear, you must identify it for what it is and what it does. You must consider fear as public enemy number one. Fear, thanks to God, Fear is a crippling spirit. It paralyzes and neutralizes. Fear is a magnet that pulls you toward disasters. Remember Joe said, the thing that I have greatly feel has come upon me. Fear is destructive in nature because it is a child of the devil. You see, saints of God, fear is the devil counterpart to faith. In other words, fear is faith in the devil power and ability to bring his will to pass in your life. To slam the door on fear, saints of God, you must hate it. You must see it as the devil trying to rob you of every precious thing in your life. Fear is a pushover it will suck every ounce of life right out of you. It will drain your soul and any hope that then could ever get better. It will squeeze you, it will squeeze out of you every ounce of faith, just like a dirty dish rag. If you don't conquer fear, it will wring every drop of joy out of your life. Tell your neighbors today, thanks to God, today we're slamming the door on fear. We got to slam the door on fear, thanks to God, to in, to in order to be victorious. Because as long as fear is there, there's no hope and there's no faith. As I said, 
Fear is a thief that will rob you of a thousand blessings. You see, saints of God, fear tears us down, but faith lifts us up. Fear focuses on the problem, but faith looks for the solution. Fear discouraged and defeated us, but faith said, I am more than conquerors through God who loves me. Romans 8 37. Fear said, I can't. There's no hope. But faith said, I will be still and know that God is God. Sometimes, thanks to God, we just have to be still and know that God is God. We have to make sure that we is not traveling on the same path as the devil. Matter of fact, we should be treaded on him instead of his pathway. We should have him on our feet. You see, saints of God, fear is a child of the devil. Fear comes the same way as faith does. It comes by hearing the word. But fear comes by hearing the word that are inspired by the devil. We have faith by hearing the word of God. The same way, so we have to be careful what you listen to, saints of God. And who's speaking what in your life? Fear robs a generation of, of their inheritance. Fear almost took Peter to a watery grave. Fear is the dark room where negative are developed. Fear robs the eyes of sight and the heart of hope. The Bible said that fear has torment, saints of God. First John 14, 18 said, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made of perfect love. Saints of God, fear is a terrible thing. It is a spirit and it belongs to the devil. Fear is a killer. It kills your dreams and your hope and your faith. It throws a dark cloud of repair over every good thing. You must decide, I'm going to slam the door on fear and live in faith. How are you going to do this? Well, what you feed, it grows. You must decide, I am going to feed my faith and starve my fears. Sadly, I believe in many cases that the church is going to, is doing us a great disservice, saints of God, by preaching to us a gospel of relaxation. As though our love for God and our faith in God is going to, to protect us from going through anything. You know, I believe in telling it like it is, saints of God. I believe there's so much puffing in the pulpit today that just like a car salesman, that's what he do when he tried to sell you a car. He put all this sweet stuff, oh, this car is this, this car is that. Oh, this car is never what it almost just drive itself. It puffs it up. And that way some preachers in the poor pick is doing today. They sugarcoating the word of God and tell them instead of telling it like it is. See, those salesmen, they not lying, but they are beautifying the heaviness of their conception, deception about the car. Anything for to get, make a sale for you to purchase that vehicle. Saints of God, we don't need any embarrassment in the pulpit. What we need is the pure, honest truth of God's words. This is the truth. 
Faith in God and love for God doesn't guarantee us a problem-free life. Faith in God is no guarantee that you will never get sick or that your children will never get on drugs or that you will never suffer financial defeat or your love for God and your love for your love for God and your love for God and faith in God must not affect may not affect gas prices or food prices one bit our faith in God does not promise us that we won't have a nuclear war it doesn't want I don't want to scare you this morning thanks to God but I want to be particular applicable today with you as much as possible. There are issues we are facing in our country. We must learn how to, be, to live in the power and the authority of what God has said. Not what we wish he said or presume he would say. The truth is he never promised us that our faith would keep us, keep us from inflation, from increasing or that our faith will close the border or cut off the flow of other into this country. He never promised us that we would have a we would, we would we wouldn't never have a car wait, or our our house wouldn't get damaged, or the earth wouldn't creep under our feet, or a hurricane would never hit us off in our life. He never said that, thanks for God. I hope you want to hear the truth this morning, saints of God, because I'm going to stand here. And I'm not going to stand here and hype you up with a bunch of feel-good words that paint a pretty picture of a perfect word where everything always turns out wonderful just because you are saved. It's not, saints of God. Because you are saved don't mean you're not going to have trials and tribulations. Things are going to come in your life. But I got good news, saints of God, because you have faith in God and don't let fear overturn you, overturn that faith. Just look at the end result. You are victorious in Christ. You got the victory in Christ, saints of God, because you is more than conquerors. Don't let fear triple you. I'm not mad at you, saints of God, but today is the day that we need to know the truth. We just can't continue to sugarcoat the word of God. You see, saints of God, that's not real life. In real life, bad things do happen, even to good people, to save people. But what I am going to do is to give you some Holy Ghost fire power that will put a fight in your spirit, it's some steel in your backbone, that no matter what come your way, you can look at any situation and say, no weapon that is formed against me shall profit. And every time that rise up against me in judgment, I will condemn it. Isaiah 54, 17. And you can say, when the enemy come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will rise up and stand against him. Isaiah 59 and 19. Or you can say, all things work together for good to them that love God and who is called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8. 28. 28. And yet, again, you can say, you are the children, you are God's children, and have overcome them. For greater is he that's in, in you than he is in the world. 1 John 4 and 4. And also, saints of God, 1 John 5 and 4 says, whosoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. It didn't say it feel, saints of God. It said even our faith. Slam the door on fear, saints of God. You see, no love for God and faith in God 
but it didn't keep the flood from coming. It didn't keep jo uh, Joseph from being betrayed by his brother and being thrown in a pit. It didn't stop the three Hebrew boys from going into the fiery furnace, or it didn't stop Daniel from being thrown in the lion's den. You see, you might say, Pastor, I thought you were supposed to encourage us today. I am by telling you what the words say. Standing on the word, Amen. you are victorious. Mm -hmm. You are a child of God. Slam the door on faith. Yes. I am, but the difference between me and a lot of other preachers today, today is this, saints of God. I'm going to tell you the truth. No, no, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and no flavor added to it. I'm not going to water it down just to purify it so that the word of God will be easy to swallow this morning. We have to rest. We have the rest of the month. We have the rest of the year. We have the rest of our life to speak and live our life in faith by speaking the true word of God. We need to start today, right now, saints of God, speaking the true word of God, tearing down the word of God. Of, of fear, slamming the door on fear, saints of God. You and I need to know that facing the future fearless doesn't mean everything is going to be peaches and cream, saints of God. It's not. You're going to have trials and tribulation. It doesn't mean that the devil is not going to run or uh, roll over and play dead either. The devil is doing his job. It is time for we as believers to start doing ours. I'm not mad at you, saints of God. I'm not angry at you, saints of God. But I just let you, let you know, here let you know, saints of God, that we need to put the devil in his place, put him under our feet. It is time. Get sick and tired of being sick and tired of fear running your life, running my life. You guys, have you ever just had something you just get so sick and tired of being sick and tired of something till you do something? Today, thanks to God, should be that day. Amen. Just get sick and tired of being sick and tired of devil running your life. But you see, thanks to God, faith in the future fear of fearlessness is about slamming the door on fear and having the faith and the confidence that no matter what come or go, if God is be for us, who can be against us? You see, thanks to God, it's not about us in a way. It's about the Lord. It's about knowing that whatever we go through, God is with us. No matter what you're going through, saints of God, God is with you. You have faith to believe. Slam the door on fear. Isaiah 41 and 10 said, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yet I will help thee. Yet I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 43 and 2 said, When thou pass through the water, I will be with thee. And through the river, they should not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, thou shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God is with you, saints of God. No matter what you're going through, God is there. Just call on the name of Jesus. Call on his name. You ain't got to call on pastor. Because he is human too. But the name that you can call on 24-7 is the name of Jesus. 
and I guarantee that you will get an answer. You might call Pastor Howard. You might call Pastor Jackson. You might call Pastor Jackson. You might call me. But it's not a guarantee that you will get an answer. You might not get it uh, when you need it. You might call that number. Oh, no, I'm sleepy. Or cut the phone off. But you can call on Jesus anytime, day or night, because he never sleep enough to do his slumber. Call on the name of Jesus, saints of God. See, you see, saints of God, God never promised us we wouldn't have to go through anything, but he promised his presence would go with us, and he would sustain us. One of the first keys to Sam the door on, faith, on fear is to know that fear is not just a negative emotion. Fear is a spirit. It is a demonic spirit. It's not a motion, thanks God. Oh, I'm just afraid. I'm just... Get that spirit out of your life. You see, thanks to God, that means that fear is a living personality that is seeking resonance in your life because it is a spirit. You must resist fear like you would resist anyone else trying to break into your house. If somebody trying to break into your house, what you going to do? You're going to defend it, right? It's fear trying to break into your house. What you going to do? Defend it. Defend it with the word, saints of God. Second Timothy 1 and 7 said, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Said again, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You have the mind of Christ, thanks to God. Use it. Speak the word. What did Jesus do when the devil approached him when he after fasting? While he was fasting, he spoke the word. And you also have to speak the word. If the devil attempted Jesus, he's going to attempt you and I. Speak the word, thanks to God. You ain't got to tremble. The only one is, is you fear is God himself. It ain't like, oh, I'm so scared, God. But fear him because of his reverence. You see, thanks to God. Fear is always looking and creeping around, trying to gain access to your life. See, I love the way the Apostle Paul and the way he handled his fear. When it came for Paul to die, he recorded that he ran to the chopping block. What was Paul doing? He was robbing fear of its power in his life. He was slamming the door on fear. He was uh, shredding down fear on the way to execution. He was saying, you're not going to take my life. I'm running to give my life away for the one who gave me everything. And that's what we should do. The one that gives you everything that, that you need, that supply all your need, is the one that you should be running to. As I can be honest with you, saints of God, I don't believe that we're through the shaking yet. I don't believe we're on the other side of the storm yet. I believe we are beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but we are still going to go through some turbulence. 
in this lifetime, thanks God. We ain't there yet. We might see the light at the end of the tunnel, but there's still some turbulence. Like I just got off the plane the other uh, week. Yeah, you know how you, them planes hit them turbulence? And you're like, okay now. God, keep the plane. We ain't landing. We, and I can't walk on. We're going through some turbulence, thanks to God. But just know that God got this. He got it all under control. See, this message is not about avoiding the turbulence that we are going through, but how to ride it out and come out on top. You see, saints of God, no no longer shall fear Lord itself over us, but we shall rule over our fear by faith. No longer shall we be held back by fear of the past or the fear of the future. No longer should we be lived by fear of COVID, of monkeypox, or any other disease, germ, or virus. No longer should we fret over our food supply or our eggs price or toilet paper or gas prices because our God supply all our needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. We are not to be, we are not to be slave to fear. In 2023, we are to slam the door on fear. In 2 Samuel 23, 23 verse 11 and 12, we read as, you can read as one, we read of David, 20 mighty men. His name was Shema. One day, he would, and some of the other folks would gather Lytton in his pea patch, and a Philistine troop rushed in on them. All those who was assisting Shema flee in, fleed in fear. But the Bible said that Shema stood amidst the ground and defe- defended it and slew the Philistine, and the Lord produced a great victory. Saints of God, we got to stand our ground. We got to defend the word of God. We got to defend what we know is right. Don't let fear overtake you and say you can't. No, you can't, but you can through Christ who strengthened you. Aren't that the word? I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So you guys got to look at, no, you can't do this. You can't do that. Speak backward. No, I can't. But through Christ, I can. You You see, saints of God, one man slammed the door on field, not only defeated his pea patch, but also flew the Philistine troop that very day. Because he stood his ground and told fear, not today. Thanks to God, our faith in God is not an escape patch to magically escape our fears, but our faith in the endurance of the supernatural grace and power of God to confront our fears and to slam the door on our to slam the door on our fields and put them under our feet. You see, saints of God, it's not about us, but the power through the Lord Jesus Christ that gives us. I don't know what's coming next on the world scene. I don't know if there will be a nuclear class in our future. It sure sounds like the power because of what way this country is leaning in that direction. But it doesn't matter because I'm slamming the door on fear, saints of God. According to scriptures, saints of God, our time are in God's hand. I understand there are 365 fear not in the Bible. One for every day of the year, but every single day you can slam the door on fear. If that's 365 fear nots, you can use them. 
365 days a year. Slam the door, thanks to God. That's my encouragement. Slam the door on fear. You see, saints of God, according to Scripture, our time is in God's hand. God's words do not promise us that the future will be trouble-free, but it does promise us that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. So just hold on, saints of God, Hold on and hold out because you shall have the victory. Yes, hold on. Don't give up and don't give in to fear. So instead of talking about the good old glorious days gone by and dread the future, saints of God, we should be celebrating that we are in the greater glorious days and the best is yet to come. Saints of God, the best is yet to come. Stop fearing and start celebrating. One of the greatest ways to slam the door on fear is to celebrate where we are going. Celebrate that we haven't seen anything yet compared to what we will see. Celebrate that God always saved his best for last. Celebrate that everything God has done in the past was just a warm-up for what is to come. I know that from a natural perspective, our world, thanks to God, like it is in a mess. But I believe that it is proof positive that something big is on the horizon. I really believe that, thanks to God. Something big is on the horizon. Like I said, I'm slamming the door on fear. And I believe that's something greater still to come. I believe that the stage is being set for a worldwide shaking and revelation or revival on a scale that had never been seen before. I believe there is another season. Uh, that I believe that that is the reason why the devil is trying to pull us into fear even more. So he can distract us from the greatest move of God that had ever, ever hit this planet. See, the devil knows where he's going. And he's trying to take as many and distract as many as he could with him. Don't be fooled and don't be deceived, saints of God. Stand on the word. Slam the door on fear. Say this with me, saints of God. I am slamming the door on fear. My time are in God's hand. Something big is happening. I will face the future fearless. I will not run away in fear. And in closing, saints of God, like Shema, I too refuse to be a victim of fear and run away and hide. But I will stand my ground and fight and expect a great victory. God is our refuge and our strength in even present help and trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, through, though the earth be removed and the mountain be fallen into the sea. For the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let be a people of faith rather than fear through all of this, saints of God, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. 
what is not there. Fear. <laughs> Amen. Remember the knock, knock, who's there? No fear here. Come on. Knock, knock. Who's there? Jesus. The spirit of faith. Hallelujah. Knock, knock. So, did, like Reed said, the devil's knocking. He's, he's trying. He goes about what? As a roaring lion. He's going about as a roaring lion. Well, guess what? He ain't the lion. <laughs> he's going about like one. See, he's always a deceiver. See, he's trying to be a believer, but not he's a deceiver. See, believers know we're not going to be deceived. Amen. Because we know that spirit of fear, don't we? We, but we, we know that it, it's a force. Fear is a force. Faith is greater. Because God's greater. Why he says, the greater one, Jesus said, the greater one lives on the inside of you. But see, not every Christian knows that. Not every Christian shows that by their action when fear comes. See, when fear knocks at the door, if faith answers, we got to put, fear will be put on the run. When me and Sherry got born again, we got born again at home. Both of us received Jesus at home, but we went to a meeting. Brother Terrence Rose at West A, Church of God. I always just call that West C for some way, Pastor, but I guess I drove around it. I'm kind of actually getting this West A, Church of God. We went down and, and Jesus met me. Jesus, my deliverer met me down there at that altar. I was born again, but I was still bound by fear. Come on. I was a Christian. I was born again, Pastor. I was born again, but still had fear because I didn't have the Word of God in me. In other words, it, it, I didn't have a revelation of what I had. See, that's where the deceiver comes in. See, that's why Jesus came to reveal who the Father is. So when I got delivered that night, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Not I was filled then, but then I started operating in the Holy Ghost. The power set me free. See, there's a lot of people that have never, been, have never heard of the power because it hasn't been preached. Being born again has been preached. 1 John 5, 4. I'm not adding to this message. I'm just kind of ex- kind of help you explain a little bit we know Dr. Price has got the victory. Dr. Gary Price, he's in heaven. He wore that tag on his car, 1 John 5, 4. He didn't have the scripture. He had the verse. You need to go find out what it was, but he knew what it was. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is word of faith, worship center, and it, this, this church has been taught faith. It, but see, it's not our faith. It's God's faith. Have faith in God. See, 1 John 5, 4, you need to read 1 John 5, 1 through 3, 4. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born again. That's where your faith should be in Jesus Christ. And if you believe that, then when fear comes, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Every fear, every attack that's going to come, I've overcome it because Christ overcame. And see, that's where I don't... And when I went to that meeting that night, there was tongues and interpretation of tongues, but I didn't know all that. I didn't understand tongues because I had never been taught about speaking in tongues, about the gift of the Holy Ghost. But I bought the tape. <laughs> there, this is going to be on YouTube. Back then, we didn't have YouTube going on, but there was cassette tapes. That's Dr. Dr. Howard here. He preached a lot of word and put it on tapes. See, the tapes don't save you. Faith of the word of God is what saves you. You can have all the tapes of every every faith teacher, preacher, been born since Jesus and have it underneath your bed. That don't save you. It's when you get it right in here. I said, when fear tries to hit here and you got faith in there, you're going to speak something. It's called the word, it's called the spirit of faith. So I used to have a spirit of fear, and I didn't know it was a spirit until I met the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. See, when, when Terrence Rose touched me, Jesus touched me because he was in Terrence Rose, and Terrence Rose knew Jesus was in him. He knew he had power in him, and when he touched me and said, in Jesus' name, Jesus touched me with his power and delivered me. Devils, devils, they were in the service. They were in me. 
But when Christ, when that anointing touched me, they had to leave. They knew, they know Jesus. Them spirits know Jesus. And Terrence Rose knew he had Christ in him. And he believed when he prayed and laid hands on people that that power, that, that Christ, the anointed one, would go anoint them. And when me and Sherry got set free, I, I had to preach this gospel because I was free. But we bought the tapes that night, video tapes, VCR tapes. Y'all remember VCR, video cassette recorders? It might have been, I don't know, maybe two or three years later after I got born, after I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and learned about speaking in tongues and learned about gifts of, the, of healing and miracles and, and we could do the same work. See, I, heard, I, got, I got that. And then we, we were just sitting at home watching those tapes. Maybe had a Bible study or something. I don't know. Before I went down, there was tongues and then there was interpretation of tongues. Now, I can't tell you what the tongues were because that's a gift of God. And that was a, their own prayer language. I just knew it was not an English language. You know, I, I've got my tongue. Well, I heard a tongue, but it wasn't mine. It was somebody else's. But then I heard somebody say, run to me, run to me, run to me. That was the interpretation of that tongue. I said, Sherry, look at there. That was what they were, that, that, that was the interpretation. You know what I did that night? I ran to that altar. But I was saved. I was born again, but I ran to that altar. When I say ran, I walked fast. I didn't run, but I run. I ran. See, that, that, that was God speaking. Run to me. My spirit heard run down there. Run. Go down to that altar. Go down to that altar. I felt like I needed to be saved again, but no, Jesus knew I needed to be delivered because that man that was preaching believed what he was preaching. See, I believe what Reed's preaching. I believe when I'm preaching. And if you believe it, you'll be free. Now, to... Just because you get saved doesn't mean you stay free. I'm talking about in your mind, in your soul. See, in my spirit, I'm saved. I'm going, I, I'm God's and he's mine. But the devil is going to mess with you in your mind until my mind is changed, until Jesus changes it. But thank God Jesus didn't leave us here comfortless. He sent us a comforter, the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is speaking to you. We don't run from a fight. We run to the fight. And we help people win the fight. See, David, man, when he fought Goliath, that was a big, that was a big uh, manifestation of the spirit of fear in a big man, a big ugly man. I'll just call him like he was. He was an ugly giant. You know why he's ugly? Because he didn't know God. He didn't have a covenant with God. And he was out there cursing the armies of God. That's, that's, whew, that's mocking God. We, we see the end of the story. He lost his head. God, God loved that giant. God loved Goliath. But Goliath didn't love God. And his time ran out. See, what caused why? Because somebody that had been anointed, David was already anointed. Come. He came and he heard something. He wasn't here in the spirit of faith. He was here in the spirit of fear, mocking. See, as a Christian, that's what Reed's telling you. The world's going to mock you. They're going to hate you. They're going to call you all kind of evil because, not because of who you are, who I am, because whose I am. Because if you if you are a Christian, you're going to stand for what's right, not for what's wrong. And you're not going to run from it. You're going to run to it with a rock, with, a, amen, with the word of God. Amen. We're going to run to that fight and we're going to win it because we in it to win it. Amen. We're out here to win people to Jesus. Hallelujah. Slam the door on that, on that fear. Knock, knock. If it's not Jesus, if it's not the spirit of faith, not here. You say, not here. Spirit, fear is not living here. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. My wife wasn't ship ship at Children's Church. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to leave you with this. I'm going to preach this, but I just heard this today as Reed's preaching on this. Slam the door on fear. Knock, knock. Who's here? Anybody in here got AAA? 
Anybody else got AAA in here? One, two. I do. I got AAA. When me and Sherry, when we were single and didn't have kids, I, I, I didn't need AAA. I was younger back then. If I have a flat, I can change it. You know, I can still change a flat. But I got some little bit of stuff that's in my way. It slows me down. It's called cellulite. <laughs> I got extra cellulite than I had when I was, when I married Sherry. And I knew a few things. I said I knew a few things. <laughs> How do you know things? Somebody will teach you. Amen. So I had a little bit of teaching on flat tires, different things. I can do so. I got, I, got a little, I got a lot more wisdom than I had back then, Cecil. You know, I can do some things. I just can't do them as quick as I used to sometimes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But when my kids started having car problems and I'm working, or sometimes I'm at church and I got a suit on, you know what? AAA was sounding a lot sweeter. Membership. I, I got the card. I've got the membership card. I pay, we pay the dues. I've got my name on the card. But if, when, when Kelsey had a flat tire, when we, I was driving her car, when we came back from UNC Chapel Hill after she graduated, I don't think she, the, the tire was good. I think it just hit something in the interstate and we had a, it didn't, we didn't get, I guess it just blew out. That little Azuzu was packed full of stuff that we had. In this, I don't know how much, how she had all this stuff in her dorm that we took up there. I could have stayed there on that road all night crying to Jesus, telling him about my problems. You know, there's a song about that. Tell him all about our problems. He will hear my fainted cry, and he will answer by and by. <laughs> Come on. The spirit of fear of getting hit by a transfer truck flying down I-85 was there because I had to get out of the Zuzu. Now, you know, the wind, just the wind by them big old truckers doing 75 mile an hour, we would blood and kind of knock you. That's a spirit of fear right there. So I could sit there all day complaining and whining about, Lord, why did this happen to me? And, you know, I'm one of your favorites. I've been in, I've been in Spirit of Faith Worship Center. I follow my pastor. He teached faith to me for nine years. Now, now I'm a pastor, Lord. See, God's not my problem. That's what Reed's telling you. Fear's the problem. You can sit there all day. Man, well, I'm a faith preacher. I preach things like this shouldn't happen to me. Sometimes it has nothing to do with you, Glenn. There's just a big old piece of metal on the road, and you just happen to hit it. But God. So I could sit there and cry out all day. Triple A, they love me. I pay dues. They really love me because I pay the dues, and I pay them on time. Money's in the bank. But until I call them, until I what? Call them. They don't know I have a problem. So until you call upon the Lord, not just when you got a problem, but just call him because you love him and you just want to talk to him. And just want to, not because you need something from him, but because you need him. But when I call AAA, they say, where are you at? We'll be right there. See, Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon his name and he will answer you. Not by and by, because he's in you. Amen. And he will and he will deliver you. Triple A delivered me from that suffering. I didn't have to take you know, I was, I was in slacks. I didn't have to get out there in that heat because it was hot. Jim was his graduation moving. I've been we've been moving kids since we've had them. Been moving them. They've been moving. Doing all kind of things. Faith will not move God. He's already moved. Faith will not move God. He's already moved. Faith gets you moving. <laughs> Amen. Faith gets you moving to God who's already moved. Amen. I moved to AAA. When, I, when we started having problems, I said, I think we need AAA. I, don't have, I can't move as fast as I used to. I can't get there sometimes. My child's sitting there on the side of the road, and I might not be there. AAA can be there. They're right around the, they're right around the corner. If you got faith in God, he never leaves you. And he has given you his spirit. He put it in us, God in us. And he's for us. But you got to call. Amen. Call upon him and he will answer you. And he will show you things you don't even know. Remember this year, we're going to be three moves ahead of, ahead of the spirit of fear. We're going to have three 
moves of heaven. You got to believe that. And you got to start calling on that. Lord, the pastor said, that we're, I'm going I'm to be three moves ahead of the devil. And you start calling it and you, and you will see it manifest. You will have a visitation. Spirit of faith will hit you. Word of wisdom will hit you. Word of knowledge. You just know something. You just know something. You just know, I ain't going there today. Well, El Verate, I always eat there on Sunday. Not today. I mean, you know what I say? Just listen to the Spirit of God. That's your stomach, too. Your stomach speaks to you, too, sometimes. Sometimes he'll say, go to El Verate, and when you get there, you're going to see a man over there with his family. Feed them. Amen? That ain't the devil. The devil don't want you to do something good. That ain't the spirit of fear. Come on. God's AAA service. Anywhere, any place, any time. That's the spirit of faith. Amen? That's what AAA stands for. They're anywhere, any place, any time, but so is God. When you call upon Him, He's got the Father, He's got the Son, He's got the Holy Ghost. He's got what you need. When you need it, anytime you need it, but all you got to make sure you call. Amen? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, that we have... Well, thank you, Lord, that we called upon you today, Lord. And that, Lord, you have inhabited our praise today, Lord. That, Lord, 2023, we're going to call on you because you've got our victory. Lord, the victory is not in man. The victory is in Christ Jesus. The man that became, he is the man. He, is, he was the son of man, but he's also the son of God. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, that he's a risen Savior. And he's our shepherd, Lord. He's the Lord. He's my shepherd. We shall not lack any good thing. And, Lord, we thank you. You're going to lead us beside still waters. You're going to show us the way. Not only show us the way, we're going to be a way, we are going to be a, a way for somebody. We're going to be a way for somebody to get out of fear and get into faith. We're going to be a vessel that's going to show forth your glory. We're going to be, vessel, we're, we're going to be vessels of honor because you have honored us with your gift of the Holy Ghost. And, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We're not going to be in fear. We're slamming a door on it. Every time it knocks, we're going to answer with faith. And we, but, do, but in order to have that, we got to be, we got to be diligent. we got to be studying your word. So we're going to be doers of the word. We're going to be studying your word. And Lord, when we study, we're going to find. When we ask, we're going to hear. And when the knock comes, we're going to give them a spirit of faith. Because we're going to know what to say, how to say it, and we're going to give you the praise for it victory before we see it but we got the victory now and we thank you for it in jesus name can you say amen agree with some prayer here for jackie and randy they've been dealing with a dealing with dealing with the bug the boys shane kiker which is the boy's dad he got moved into a nursing facility and he don't like it there i went to visit boots boots don't like it there it's not their place. It's, not, it's, it, it's never our destiny. It's never our place to be where we can't be enjoying ourselves. But you know what? God is there. And he knows our suffering. He knows our needs. And he'll meet those needs according to our faith. So, Father, I just thank you right now, Lord, meeting the needs of these families, of Jackie and Randy, Lord. They are, they are meeting the needs, spiritual needs and financial needs of, 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 of their daughter and their children, Lord. And, Lord, you said that you, anything that we do for you, Lord, you'll multiply back in our lives. So we just speak blessings over Jackie and Randy. Lord, what you've called them to do in the ministry, they'll, they'll do it, Lord. They're doing it right now. But we just call them blessed. We call them healed. And, Lord, we continue to release, release our faith to Shane Geiger that, Lord, he will not have a spirit of fear in that place. And in that place, in that place that he's in, that dark place that he's in right now, Lord, we release light to him. Lord, you are the light of the world. And, Lord, we, he, he says he has received you as Lord and Savior, but, Lord, he needs to see you. He needs to see you, Lord, in this place. He needs to see you in this place. And we thank you, Lord, where darkness is, Lord, where you are, darkness has to leave. So, Lord, bring him out of that darkness. Bring Shane Kiger out of that darkness. Out any depression right now, any spirit of depression right now, in the name of Jesus, we command it to leave. And, Lord, we pray for perfect people perfect labors across his path that he'll get he'll get the care that he needs in that place lord but also lord we just thank you right now that you visit him lord a visitation to him lord you can touch what's been damaged in his body and you are the healer so we just pray that you touch him lord touch him in a mighty way in the name of jesus can you say amen hallelujah anybody need personal prayer 
I want you to come down. I don't want you to sit. I want you to come down this morning if you need us to pray with you, agree with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is a good day. Well, it's cloudy outside. No, there's sun. You, you just, you're just looking at the wrong thing. Amen. There's sun out there. I've seen a lot of rain this year. I'll tell you what, it's time for some sunshine. There's a lot of Christians, they need, the, they need the latter rain. They've had some former rain, but they need that latter rain. They need the latter rain. If you're here and you've never been uh, baptized in the Holy Ghost and speaking tongues, come up here. If you're listening online, shoot me an email. Pastor at wfwc.org. We got a, we got a, last year, our giving, we had about $1,200 that came in through PayPal. I tell you what, when you get paid online, that's a pal. What a pal. From Michigan, a lady heard the message. This is back in August. I, I checked it last night. And I can go in there and I can hit that information. It tells me where the person sewed, where they're from. She was from Michigan. She was watching in Michigan. So I, I shared that program. I said, man, she enjoyed that message. I'll just share it again. Yeah, I don't know. It was me, but if it was Reed, I'd share it again. And she sent 20, no, she, yeah, she sent $25. Hey, she believed in what she heard. She said, I'm going to send that, I'm going to send some money. If we hadn't opened that account, that's $25. It would have been looking, as a seed looking for somewhere to go. <laughs> Amen. So if you know somebody that needs this, they, they want to sow, but they can't go, they can go online, wfwc.org, hit the donate button and pay by PayPal. And we had another lady that gave $100 twice. And she was from Pennsylvania. All the way from Pennsylvania. If Jesus was here, he's here. But if he was here in body, he would use every resource he could to get the gospel preached. I could see James working on a computer right now, Glenn. Oh, what was that, Peter? <laughs> dot what? <laughs> dot what? Was that dot org, Peter, or dot com? <laughs> Holy Ghost. They'd be calling on the Holy Ghost. I like the dot com. I mean, we are dot or dot com means it's a command. Come on. God has to commanded the blessing on you. He has commanded his blessing on you. I command that blessing to manifest in your life. Spirit, soul, and body in 2023 in Jesus' name. Manifest blessing. I speak lack off. I speak spirit of lack off of you right now in the name of Jesus. And anybody watching, if you'll receive it, tell lack's got to go because Jesus came. Jesus came. He's our shepherd. We shall not lack. That's a spirit that's not Christ. That's the Antichrist spirit. Lack is not from God. Slap it back. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're going somewhere to help somebody. I said, we're going somewhere to help somebody. In Jesus' name. Jack's going back to the prisons. As far as the Lord leads him, he's going. Amen. That's in your heart, ain't it, Jack? Well, where, Paul said, God said, Paul, you're going to Rome. Now, there was a storm. You, who are you going to believe? There's a tumor, but you know what? That tumor is just a storm, right? We're not denying it's not there. We're just denying that God said you're going to the prisons. The tumor is not going to the prisons. Jesus is going there. He's the healer. You got to say that. See, that's the word of the Lord from you. Paul, God told Paul, you're going to Rome. Storm. Angel showed up. <laughs> Why? Fear was there. Fear is real. God is real. Amen. Amen. Jim, you got a word? Okay. I, I, I just want to make sure. I've seen some of them looks before. Some of them looks turned into books. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Jim got, got some books coming. Amen. That's the word of God, ain't it? Books, plural. Wanda said, I think I'm going to have to start helping him. He's going to have to be the typewriter or something. God's got to send him a typist. Lord, is, that a, is that a desire, Jim? God knew and in the head and knew all this stuff. Amen? Editor. Hallelujah. God is good. But can I give you the mic so everybody can hear, so the world can hear? Long story short, I'll try to get through it without being emotional. As some of you know, my great grandbaby has been real sick running 105 temperatures, being at about 70 yards and three admissions to the hospital a month and a half. Five months old, been through every test you can think of, even drank the contrast, 
Couldn't find out what's wrong. And five doctors working, brain doctor, heart doctor, pediatricians, sugar doctor, and I don't know who else. But on Thursday, before he was discharged on Friday, <clears throat> they said it's a medical mystery. They don't know what's wrong with him. He's in there nine days. Well, in the meantime, three or four days earlier, I got an old, not Shelby's favorite car, 94 Civic, that I was getting pretty good gas miles. All of a sudden, I'm getting 100 miles to a tank. And I'm Googling what's wrong with my car because I never had anything done to it. And flashes up on my phone, a class action lawsuit, Infamil formerly killing babies. Well, Creed's on Infamil. So I sent it to my granddaughter. She shows the doctors and they said, no, it's not that. We, we're aware of that, it's not that. And I insisted, I said, you make sure they know for sure, but they never did. But make a long story short, on Thursday when they came in, it was a medical mystery, they didn't know what was wrong with it. So they suggested change his formula. He hasn't run a fever since. Shelby kept him all day and he was just a happy little boy. And I just wanna praise God that he works in mysterious ways and by iPhone, we found out what's wrong with him. The doctors never could, but God knew what it was. Amen. I tell you what, hallelujah, that'll preach. I tell you what, God's got a formula and it's called success. It's called life. But we got to listen. Because see, we don't deny the devil. We just deny him. He, he's, he's not our God. He used to be my God. That's when I was a sinner man. But that sinner man died over, tw over 24 years ago. And I got born again. Amen. So see, in our prayers change things amen hallelujah that's a word that's a word from god but <laughs> uh, it wasn't ready yet i'm just going to add what what we heard there thank god for doctors a lot of times we need to go see one so we can find out how to pray but uh i saw news pop up this past week sometime or another the the oldest person living in the u.s 113 years old died they asked her there right toward the end of her i mean you know she's about 112 or 113 they said what what do you credit to your longevity she said number one my aversion to going to doctors and number two i ate plenty of pie and cake <laughs> pie and cake pie and cake i think that was a word for me today I don't want pie and pie and the buy and buy. I want it now I, with, with steak. See, so usually I have steak on my plate while I wait, but I usually don't get dessert. Maybe I'll go. <laughs> go to the doctor, but go to the doctor in faith. Amen. And amen. God's God's prayer. See, it ain't it ain't about one of us. It's about all of us. Amen. Amen. oldest daughter's lost 85 pounds and she um had a lot of skin hanging so she decided to go have it removed and so she had it done to be two weeks this coming tuesday she interviewed about eight or nine doctors and um, prayed over it and decided the one she wanted she went with the doctor in huntersville and to make a long story short she's had to to rent a place because she can't go up her steps she lives in two-story so they've rented a place off of Poplar tent road and I've been able, I wasn't able to go visit her because I've been sick. And so I, um, one night she called, I think it was Tuesday, last Tuesday, they took the drain tubes out of her. And on Tuesday night late, she started, I mean, she was doing good up until that point. She had pain, but she was doing good. And then she woke up and it was like, Mom, it's the worst pain I've ever had in my life. Well, Dale's up and down all night. And he's seen on our phone at 2.15, our daughter text us, and he come got me. He said, I think I think you better get up. He said, um, our daughter's in bad shape. So I called her, and she was in so much pain, crying, and, and just terrified. I started praying with her and speaking the word of God in her, and finally over an hour of ministering to her, calming her down, the Lord told me she's got infection. So I started speaking to that infection well, she went to the doctor at 7.30 the next morning. She was already there when he opened up. And he told her that he didn't know what it was, uh, other than maybe she had strained um, using the restroom. 
and that he, um, I'm going to put you on some Bactrim and some pain medications and Valium, and we're going to, he said it, it might be infection, that you've got pockets in there. So anyway, to make a long story short, he told her if this didn't help, he's going to have to open her back up, and she's cut almost 360 around. And so she was crying and upset. I said, Donna, you're not going to have to go through any more surgery. That is a lie from Satan. Don't receive that. You are the healed. And I told her, I said, you get in the Word of God and you start speaking of your body. And within, I know, of 12 hours, the Lord told her, he said, you've got some amoxicillin. Start taking the amoxicillin along with the Bactrim. And so she started doing it within 12 hours. She is up and doing great. She, her husband brought her by yesterday, and we were able to see her for a little bit. But I just thank God that he does speak to us. And when you are down and out, you need one another to help build you up. And I just thank God. Hallelujah. Brother Glenn, can I just speak a blessing over you? Good to have Brother Glenn visiting with us. This is a man of God. He's, he's on a journey. He's doing God's work. You know, Glenn, last week I think I spoke that discipleship is workmanship. God's called some, called us some disciples, and he's got work for us to do. But you know what? It's a good work. So, Father, right now I just thank you, Lord, for this good work, Lord. I just speak, release the blessing over him, Father God. I stir up the gift that's on the inside of him, Father. I thank you, Lord, that everywhere he puts his foot, Lord, he's blessed. Everything you've called him to do, Lord, he'll do with excellence, Lord. That, Lord, any, any, any hindrances, Father God, that's caused him to, to not get to where he needs to be quicker, Lord, we just thank you right now, Father God, for fighting the battles. Lord, in the Bible, you said you'd send hornets to go out there and get rid of the enemy. Lord, if you need to send hornets, Lord, just whatever you need to do, Lord, get it done. Satan, we, brought, we break any assignment right now that's been hindering this man of God, and we, we call him free to do what he's supposed to Free in 23. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You got a word or anything, brother? Okay. <laughs> Just look at me. That with that look of faith and expectancy. Like Sherry when she, when she was getting ready to have my last child, she said, she gave me the look. I'm trying to remember what it looked like, but I think she's giving it to me right now. It wasn't that look. It wasn't. No, it was that look. It's time to go. Amen. Is it time? It's twelve oh two. Something's being born here today. Faith. 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 Hallelujah. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Leo, Judy. Come to where they at. There's Judy. Come here, Leo. Come on down. We ordained them on the first Sunday of January. And this is the fourth Sunday of January. That they have, they have accepted the the ministry role here they're already operating in it but today we just want to recognize them as as your ministers uh bishops pastors whatever you want to call them god calls you ministers god calls you ministers you serve the people you serve them well and today we want to say thank you for deciding for for god bringing you here to word of faith worship center to serve god well and i thank you for your service what you've done for me what you're doing for me what you're doing for this church and I thank God for what he's going to do for you. He's got things. Oh, he's got things for you and Judy. Just let him be your thing. Just let him do his thing. Amen. God likes to do his thing. He likes to bless his kids. So stretch your faith this morning. These are your ministers here. They're overseeing. They're going to help, help us here at Word of Faith Worship Center. Fulfill the vision that God said to preach and teach the Word of Faith to the world. To make ready a people prepare for the Lord. So, Father, that same anointing, Lord, that same anointing that I received by my pastor, that same anointing right now, Lord, it's already been, it's already been released, Lord, we decree it today. That same spirit of faith, Father God, that's working and will work, Lord, and will, and will provide every need that they need, Lord, through their great shepherd, through Jesus. And, Lord, the Bible said, how can two walk together except they be agreed? So we thank you, Lord, that, that Leo and Judy have agreed to serve here at Word of Faith Worship Center. And, Lord, we decree it today, Lord, that everything they do, Lord, will be blessed in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. so be it, and hallelujah. You're blessed, dismissed. Come back next Friday. Remember, John Jenkins will be here Sunday morning and Sunday evening at 6.
Thank you for joining us today at Word of Faith Worship Center. I pray God's grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then according to Romans 10, 8 through 10, the word is nigh unto thee in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. We would ask you today to simply say, yes, I believe this, and I say yes to Jesus. Now, if you just received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we would encourage you to get into a good church. Our church is located at 757 Harris Street, Northwest, Concord, North Carolina, 28025. And you can also find us on the Internet at wordoffaithworshipcenter.org or wofwc.org. We hope to see you soon. Blessings.